Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new design tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial, we'll be creating an ad for Sunny's Cafe in Photoshop. To do this, we'll be working with one of several styles from the Hops and Barley's font family, courtesy of Phenotype. The full font family and many other best selling fonts are all part of the Font Lovers versatile library. This all new font library is one of the most diverse bundles to date and contains a massive assortment of fonts from Latino type. Tobias Saul, and many more. In addition to the Hops and Barley typeface, we'll also be using design elements from a fantastic product in the Design Cuts marketplace, courtesy of Lisa Glenz. So if you're all ready to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. We'll start off by creating a new document that's eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall with a resolution of 300. And let's go ahead and give our file a name. Now here, I'm just going to call mine Sunny's Cafe Ad Design. We can leave the color mode the way it is and background contents can be set to black and then go ahead and click create. Now the first thing we want to do once we create our new document is to import a free stock photo. Now there's a link for this image from Unsplash in the written portion of the design tutorial so go ahead and check that out and be sure to save it to your local drive. Now once you've done that go up to the file menu and choose place embedded and this is where we would just navigate to the location where that free stock photo is saved. All right, so I'm going to come into my Unsplash folder here and simply choose Place to bring this image into my document. And now once you've brought this image in, we're going to actually scale it up and reposition it a little bit so that we can crop it differently. Okay, so I'm gonna scale this up by dragging outwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box while holding Alt, Option, and Shift on the keyboard. And I'm just going to reposition it maybe somewhere over here just to get a slightly more interesting looking crop. All right, now once you've done that, go ahead and press return to apply those changes. And now let's go ahead and get rid of this background layer. We really don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. And now with that stock image smart object layer selected, come down here to the adjustment layer icon and add a black and white adjustment layer. Now we don't want our image to be completely desaturated, so with that layer selected, just press the number three to reduce the opacity to 30%. Next, come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and now we'll add a solid color adjustment layer. Now for the fill here, we want to use the hex value 5C5526, which is a sort of olive green color. Go ahead and click OK, and then we'll change the blend mode from normal to hard light. And this time we'll reduce the opacity to 50 by simply pressing the number 5 on the keyboard. So that'll add a nice kind of warm tone to our image. Right, you can see the original is kind of cool, uh, but we're actually going to warm it up a little bit by desaturating it, adding a little bit of this color on top, and now we're also going to go ahead and add a color balance adjustment layer on top of that. Now over here in the properties panel, all we need to do is boost the reds up to about 20 to 23. Somewhere in that range looks pretty good. And now we're going to select that layer, hold the shift key and select the stock photo layer at the very bottom, and press command G to put it into a group folder, and then we can go ahead and double click on the group one text, and we'll just rename this folder background image or something similar. Now let's go ahead and create a new layer and then press the letter G on the keyboard to get our gradient tool. Now up here in the toolbar, we wanna to make sure that we have a linear gradient selected that fades from black to transparent. Now once we have that, we can go ahead and zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna click somewhere up above the image outside of the image area. Click, hold the shift key and drag down to create a nice fade from the top here. Okay, so the goal here is to just really maybe darken the top of this image a little bit. And if you need to, you can do a free transform by pressing command Control t and then just maybe drag it down a little bit to extend that a bit further. Now, let's just go ahead and throw this into a folder real quick and we'll just call it fade, just so we can keep that by itself. And that's going to help us a little bit because once we add some text to this, we don't want that part of the image to stand out too much. Now, let's go ahead and add another new layer. And I'm going to press X on the keyboard so that white is my foreground color. And then I'll press T to switch over to my text tool, my type tool. And then I'm just going to click my cursor and type out Sunny's. Press return to go to a new line and type out the word cafe. Now, obviously, we have to make this text a bit bigger because it is pretty small right now. And we have to make a few other adjustments as well. So let's come up to the window menu and make sure that we have our character panel open. And we can also go ahead and open the paragraph panel as well. So over here in the character panel, we're going to be using Hops and Barley 4, which is one of several styles of this typeface that you guys will gain access to in the complete bundle. 
But for now, we're just going to be working with this particular style. So let's start off just by changing the size here to about 165. And we also want to come down here to the paragraph panel and make sure that we center our text. Okay, now we can leave the fill color set to white. And I'm just going to click on the move tool over here and basically kind of move this roughly in the center of the image, maybe a little bit lower. Zoom out so we can get a better look there. And something like that looks pretty good. So we just want this all caps, nice and big in the center. Now I think here we can also reduce the amount of space between these two lines a little bit. So I'm going to select this, both of these lines, and go ahead and change the line spacing value to about 145. And that looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to add another layer. Grab your type tool again. And this time let's go ahead and type out freshly baked goods in all caps. Press command control A to select all. And now let's go ahead and change our font to Avenir, or you guys can also use any clean sans serif font that you have um, that's similar and just nice and easy to read. So I'm going to use Avenir Heavy, and then I'm going to reduce the size of this to about 18 and increase the tracking setting to 400. Okay, now we can move this over here so that it's centered above our Sunny's Cafe text. Grab your type tool again and click inside two or three times to highlight the whole line. And now we'll come up here to the top toolbar and click on this Create Warped Text icon. Now once you have this panel here, we're going to change the style to Arc. Make sure that we have a horizontal bend selected. And then we'll change the value to 40 to create this nice arced text effect. Next, what we want to do is duplicate this layer by pressing Command Control J. And now I'll press Command Control T to do a free transform. Click, hold the Shift key, and drag this down towards the bottom. Press Return. Press T to get your type tool again. Click inside to highlight that line of text. And now click on this icon at the top again, the Create Warped Text icon. And just change this back to zero so that it just goes back to a nice straight line here. Now with your text still selected, we're going to type out ESTD for established, 1984. Press Command Control A to select this whole line of text here. And then let's reduce this even smaller so that it's set to about 12 point. Now we're also going to increase the tracking here to 940 so that we really spread out those characters. Now I want to still center this here, but I want to leave some space in between this text and the Sunny's Cafe text. So you can move that up a little bit. Maybe somewhere about there looks pretty good. And now we'll select all three of these text layers over here in the Layers panel and press Command Control G to put them into a folder. Double click that Group 1 text and rename this folder TT for Title Treatment. Now go ahead and double click on that folder to open the layer style panel. And let's go ahead and apply a drop shadow effect here because we want to make sure that our text is nice and legible on top of this background, especially where this white mug is. It can cause a little bit of legibility issue uh, with the white text on top. So we're gonna add a drop shadow here. And let's make the fill color here solid black. All right, you can either have the blend mode on multiply or normal. Uh, they look the same either way. And then we'll increase the opacity to about 70, maybe 72 to 75%. Now for the other settings here, you wanna make sure that you have global light checked off. Set the distance to zero, the spread to five, and the size to 250, and then go ahead and click okay. So now you can see that we have a drop shadow effect applied to our entire group folder. And that really helps create some separation between the text and the background. Now let's create a new layer, and then press the letter M on the keyboard to get our marquee tool. And if you hold the shift key while typing M, you'll notice that you can toggle back and forth between the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the rectangular marquee tool. Make sure that you have a solid white foreground color. And if you don't, you can simply press D on the keyboard to reset your default colors, and then use the letter X on the keyboard to toggle back and forth between those two. So with your white foreground color and the marquee tool selected, we're going to click and drag out a large rectangle that follows the same shape as our canvas, but comes in a little bit from the edges. All right, so something about there looks pretty good. And now we'll press Alt, Option, and Delete to fill this shape with solid white. Now press Command, Control, D to deselect all and create another new layer. Press X on the keyboard to change to a black foreground color. And now, just as I mentioned before, hold Shift and tap the letter M on the keyboard to switch to the Ellipse tool. All right, now I'm going to zoom in use the space bar just to click and drag up here to the upper left corner. And now I'm going to click and drag while holding down the shift key to create my circle here. 
All right, and all I'm going to do is use the space bar while still holding the shift key and clicking and dragging so that I can move it around. Okay, so I'm basically just positioning this here in the upper left corner just to create a nice little break here. And then with black as the foreground color selected, once again, we'll press Alt, Option, and Delete to fill that with solid black. Now we're going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command, Control, J, then press Command, Control, T to do a free transform. Hold Control and click on the shape and choose Flip Horizontal. And we're now going to zoom out a little bit and then click and hold the Shift key and move it to the opposite side. Now press Return to apply the changes and press Command Control E to merge this layer with the one below. So you should now have both of these black circles on a single layer. And what we want to do from here is press Command Control J again to duplicate it, Command Control T to do a free transform. Hold the control key and click anywhere inside and then choose flip vertical. Now once again click hold the shift key and we're going to move this copy down towards the bottom. Press return and then once again press command control E to merge this with the layer below. So you should now have all four of these black circles in the corners on one single layer. Now once you do hold the command control key and click on the layer thumbnail icon for this layer to activate a selection around all four of these circles in the corners. Poke out the eyeball to turn off the visibility of that layer, select the white rectangle layer, and simply press delete on the keyboard to knock those shapes out of the white rectangle. Now what we're going to do next is click on the fill for the white rectangle layer and drag it all the way down to zero so that it disappears. Now double click on this layer and apply a stroke, which now creates a nice outline around that shape. So for the stroke settings here, we want to have a size of about four pixels. You can go a little bit higher if you want, maybe try you know, 6 to make it a little bit more bold. And then for the color, we're going to use the hex value FFD800. Then go ahead and click OK twice to apply the changes. And now select both of these layers on top, press Command Control G to put them into a new group folder, double click the group one text, and rename this folder Border. Come up to the File menu and choose Place Embedded. And now we can begin importing some of our design elements here from Lisa Glanz. Now this is a great product from the Design Cuts Marketplace and it actually has a lot of cool stuff in it, but we're just going to be using a small handful of these for today. Now for this first part, we're going to grab the text divider long 32.png file and choose place. And then once you've brought this into your file, hold Alt, Option, and Shift and drag inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box to scale it down from the center. All right, then we're going to slide it down here but below the word cafe hold control and click on the shape and then choose flip vertical so that we can flip it upside down. Press return and maybe tap it down a couple of times so that it's roughly in the middle between the word cafe and our established 1984 text. Come back up to the file menu and choose place embedded once again. And this time we're going to select the individual DIY element 60. Press return. And now we're once again, we want to scale it down from the center. So hold Alt, Option, and Shift, bring it in a little bit, click and hold the Shift key and move it up. Hold the Control key and click on it and choose Flip Vertical. So we can flip that the other way. Okay, and right now it's a little hard to see because it's black on a dark background, but we're going to be changing that up in just a few moments. So let's go ahead and bring in our last element here. Go to File, Place Embedded. And we'll now grab that last element here, the individual DIY element 52.png, and then choose place. And this time, let's go ahead and maybe rotate this one a little bit, scale it down, and place it just to the right of the word cafe. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And now once you position that, maybe move a little bit closer, press command Control j to duplicate the layer, then press command Control t to do a free transform, hold the control key, click on the shape, and choose flip horizontal then click, hold the shift key, and move it over to the opposite side. So we've now got two copies of that leaf illustration facing outwards on both sides of the word cafe. Now from here we can select our top smart object layer, hold the shift key and select the text divider, then press command control G to put it into a group folder, double click the group one text, and let's just call this design elements. Now double click on this folder to open up the layer styles once again, and this time just choose a color overlay, and we're going to use that same yellow fill color here, the hex value FFD800, so that it will match our border. Then go ahead and click OK, and we now have our nice looking cafe ad that we created in just a few easy and quick steps. 
Now, to do this, we've used one of many styles of the hops and barley typeface from Phenotype, along with a few nice illustrations from Lisa Glanz from her product in the Design Cuts Marketplace. In addition, we've also used this nice free baked goods image from Unsplash, uh, which again, there's a link for in the written portion of the tutorial. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this quick and fun tutorial today. Um, and there's still time to check out the Font Lovers versatile library, where you guys will gain access to a massively diverse collection of fonts for any and all of your design projects. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully you learned a few new tips and tricks along the way. And as always, guys, we would love to see what you create with these elements in your own work. So please go ahead and share that with us, as we would love to check it out. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez here with Design Cuts, and we'll see you next time.